What's up everyone? So how does a von Karman street look? How does it form? We have a cylinder here. It's uh, playing in transient and we have a video. So if I play it, you can see this, there's vort the vorticity magnitude. So the absolute values. And as we play, you can see that these, there are these um, localized centers of vorticity, which are actually vortices, and they travel downstream, they get shed off of a cylinder. I'll play it a bit longer so you can see how it looks. And it's incredibly regular. It follows a, a uh, frequency that can be measured and it depends on the diameter of the cylinder and the free stream velocity. So why does the von Karman street form to begin with? This is still a subject of argument. Uh, <laughs> effectively, there are a couple of different mechanisms that should uh, form the von Karman street. One of them is that as the flow goes over a curved surface, it usually accelerates. So for example, think of an airfoil or a cylinder. So the flow coming over the surface is accelerating and it's actually faster than the free stream velocity now. As we'll see in the next video, I've got a video of the uh, velocity. And so there's this um, shear layer forming because there are two different uh, velocities of these, these flows. And that causes this roller and there's vorticity that's being formed. And now you get these, these initial vorticities forming, these vortices forming. And these ones then, this is the controversial bit here, um, they then form this sort of feedback loop to the rest of the flow upstream. So if you have vorticity down here, so these vortices, they then form it back upstream and it causes instability. And this results in this, this wake that we see here where you have one vortex forming and then the, the wake shifts to much uh, past the center line. Then there's this reversal and then it flip -flop, flip flops back and forth. So the play you can see that this flip flopping back and forth. And this video is the uh, UX velocity. So the velocity in from left to right downstream. And as I've mentioned before, there is this higher velocity than the free stream just over the cylinder. Obviously you have the boundary layer forming, but then, uh, and the stagnation, but then past the boundary layer, you then get this acceleration. And that's what causes this vorticity to begin with. And then downstream you see this, where these vortices where you have these low velocity regions. And the wake here is in dark blue, that's very low velocity. And you see it wheeling back and forth and these regions of low pressure, uh, sorry, um, they are low pressure as well, but um, low velocity, they go downstream. And then you have these uh, regions of high velocity just next to it, which is quite interesting. So these are vortices being shed from the cylinder all the time. All right, so that's it. Make sure to check out the International Aerodynamics Conference. We put it on every year, it's for aerodynamicists. You have to love aerodynamics to come, but you can come if you don't love it, you just have to pretend like you love it. So see you there.